What's up amigos, Commander Jaime here. This time we're gonna do a Regalia premium deck profile. Uh, Regalia in Genesis has always been one of my favorite decks to be, uh, play in the clan. And so we got some support in the Infidelity Cradle and also with the Sh uh, Shinamon Sh uh, Nita trial deck. And so I wanted to incorporate some changes into Regalia, specifically with the Minerva build, so that way uh, we can take advantage of Minerva's restand turns and go from there. And, and so one of the examples is really taking advantage of the Force Marker because with Minerva being a restander, it, it's actually very important to kind of like beef her up and actually take advantage of her. Uh, her first skill is Soul Blast 3 Regalia with the, um, and, with the names in it. And it gets plus 10k and an extra drive check. So it'll be basically uh, a base 36k Vanguard if you're on the Angelica. Uh, adding another Force Marker makes it a 46k. And obviously there's other cards that beef that up. And so making it harder to like for your opponent to actually guard against. And so that would help in that sense. Uh, so with the... Uh, also the, the thing is, is that both her skills are actually not heart restricted. So you could just ride your uh uranus and actually stride into this and still be good you just need a soul blast regalias actually and so and just to reiterate her restanding skill is actually gb3 soul blast six regalias and when it attacks you basically pay the cost and you also discard and at the end of the battle you actually resend all your regalia units so that includes your rear guard so you get a full restanding field <laughs> which is really good and so taking advantage of that is really key in that sense and so um, that's basically the key, and then of course we have Premium Collection adding Amaruda to the to the lineup, and actually she has a lot of benefits, so let's just get right into it. So for the Grade 3 lineup, right now we actually play 4 of Regalia Wisdom Angelica, and 3 of the Gleaming Lord Uranus. Uh, so Angelica is actually very beneficial, so for those that don't know, when it's placed on Vanguard Circle, you could actually choose one of your normal units with Regalia in the name. And you can actually uh, Soul Charger from the drop and actually draw a card. And so that gives you advantage and potentially can give you the Stride Fighter that you need or even the combo piece to work with with that turn. And then, of course, the second skill is actually one of the most important ones. It's actually when you stride with a, a stride with Regalia in the name. So like Minerva or Muspo and Earth and all those kind of cards. You can kind of blast one, look at the top four cards. You can add one to your hand, Soul Charge one of them, and then the rest can go to Drop Zone. So... Uh, basically, it's like a regalia engine with that skill because you want advantage to be gained, you want soul charging to happen, and then at the same time, you want to set up your drop because you have other units that actually soul charge from the drop. So it's a really good card to maintain advantage and also get your regalia engine going. And so you can do the things that you want to do uh, with like Minerva and all that such. <laughs> so still a really good card. I still play it for. It's the card that I want to ride uh, most of the time. Um, plus, you play the PG that actually only guards with, uh, oh, not guards, actually protects with Regalia in the name, so that's still kind of key. <laughs> but anyway, um, just to help with the um, with the grade 3, I play Uranus. And so, we don't play him with the Astral Plane skill. We actually play for a second skill where he could actually be, just be placed on Vanguard or even on Rearguard Circle. So that's the key, uh, pu putting him on a Rearguard Circle. And actually, you could just Soul Blast 2 and get an Imaginary Gift, Force Marker right here and just put it in a vanguard circle which is really good um again you want to make that minerva turn very strong and at the same time you can make your first stride a little bit beefer uh so for example Amaruda is a good one and uranus and cards like austria also play a factor too where they soul blast um two cards and so when you actually ride up and actually get to your angelica grade three and then you pitch to stride and all that kind of stuff if you first stride on Maruda, Depending on what your soul may look like, you may have more than four cards. And so her first skill is actually very key where you could just counter blast, flip anything, and choose a regard, give a plus 10k and a crit. And then if you have four cards or less in the soul, um, you can actually draw two and then soul charge five. So you can get advantage back if you committed some regards on the field. And at the same time, you soul charge five, which is a lot in regalia. It's, it's just, you know, you're sword charging anywhere from one to two to maybe three cards in regalia. So soul charge five is really appreciative um depending if it's regalia units or non-regalia units it's still helpful because we have units like uranus to actually soul blast non-regalia units so they're still of use and so uranus if you basically ride this stride that and then call uranus on the regard circle you can soul blast controlling your soul count and actually get the full benefit of our where you can draw two and then of course soul charge five 
and you get a force marker as well. <laughs> so you can make a really solid turn in that sense. And so I wanted to promote that and point that out. So it may, it may not have been as obvious and stuff like that. And so, yeah. So for the grade zeros, I'm going to go from grade zero to grade one to grade two, just kind of have a progression into it. And I'll explain in a little bit how that soul count looks like. So for the start in Vanguard, I'm actually playing the Daylight Angel still from GBT-14. It's a really good card because, again, it promotes that Regalia engine. So what it does is that you can kind of blast one, put it into soul, reveal three cards, and actually um, put one of them into soul and the rest into drop. And if that card that was soul charged was a Regalia unit, then you draw a card. And so you break even at that point and you get an extra potential card in the soul that has a regality name in it. So that's actually really good. <laughs> uh, so that way you can also set cards in the drop zone. So it has more value than just the on ride drop one starter, essentially. And so this is basically kind of like your go-to starter to go off and so. And it has purposes too that if you soul blast it early on, it's one of those normal units that you can just soul charge with like Angelica skill or even with one of the G guards that, um, for example, that soul charges up to four cards of different grades and you want regalias as much as possible. So that helps with that. <laughs> we are playing 12 crit as well. And so I'm in playing um, uh, the crit and the heal in regalia. Again, they came out in GBT 14 sets. Um, you want the Koko de Hime. Uh, it's, it has a skill which is valuable. You could put it in its assault. And if you have a grade three or greater, you can choose one of your units and it gets plus three. And then if you have a face up card in the G zone, you can draw a card. So in the, in the mid to late game, it becomes a Rough Seas Banshee that gives power, which is really good. And so on demand, if you have it in your hand, you can create the number, uh, you can you can build up your soul like that. And, you know, there's always been those moments <laughs> as Genesis players where we're like one card short, whether we only have two in the soul or five in the soul. And so that extra card can make a difference. So it, it can mean the, the difference between winning and losing, <laughs> to be honest. So it's it's nice. And then... Uh, one of the things I noticed while playing, because we have grade ones that now have um, a bigger shield, just like this trigger, it, it's not a bad thing to like preemptively just put it into soul, draw a card, and actually just build up the regalia soul, because you're gonna get a combo piece that may be a, a higher shield, like the 15k triggers, or even the grade ones with a bigger shield. So it's 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 nice actually. And then of course for the heal trigger, again, it's just mainly for the regalia name. It does have a skill where basically it's the counter charge soul charge one. Uh, honestly, I haven't used that skill um, in my recent playing, and just the regalia name has come up where it's like the only card in my in my drop zone that I could just like soul charge. So I I don't know if I want to decrease the number of regalias in the grade zero count. Right now, it's basically a split even with the triggers, um, and so far it's been working for me. And then of course we got the premium collection crit trigger, and then the V series crit trigger. Um, obviously, with the premium collection, it's you know when your Vanguard attacks, put it into soul plus 10k. And it's for the battle. So if you do this on a Minerva turn, Minerva will become big, but it's only for that battle. So if it restands, it goes back to, you know, that other number that it was before the, the additional 10k that it got from this unit. And it could be a nice unit that you could just throw down to build like a rear guard column and actually kind of hit numbers. So, and then you just swoop it up. And so you don't really lose advantage. So that's helped actually a lot. <laughs> so it's, it's just nice. And plus it's Genesis. So if you can get cards in the soul even more, this is a much, very much appreciated. And so you could always so bless it with generic units such as Uranus or Astria, for example. And so, yeah. So for the grade ones, I am playing the Regalia PG, like I mentioned, Jotun. Uh, it's a really good PG. Um, keep in mind, it does only uh, protect uh, Regalia units. <laughs> so if you're on a non-Regalia unit, you can't really uh, perfect guard. So just keep that in mind. But the second skill is really good, the GB1. So when it's so blasted, you can bind this card. And then basically, if you have another copy in the drop, you can bounce that to hand. And so it's kind of like a, almost like an Ursus from Shadow Paladin. So you can just get PGs back on demand. And you can do this during your main phase or battle phase on your turns. Just depends if you're on the, the first stride or Minerva turn, essentially. And since Minerva actually discards a card, if you have this in soul and you have another PG in the drop or even in the hand, um, when you do the cost, you can actually bounce it back and you can actually negate that discard too. So that's really nice. Um, so if another example is that if you had this card only in soul and one in hand, but you don't have it in the drop, you can discard the one in hand and soul blast this and then you just bounce it back to your hand. So again, you negate the cost, but at that sense, um, you're using the PG in your hand and then you just bounce it back. <laughs> that's really what that is. Whereas if it was already in the drop from milling or something, you can get that guy or a girl, I guess, uh, back to hand essentially. So honestly, I appreciate that very much um, more than just having draw PGs. 
um, and it has the regalia name. So a lot of the times I actually write this on purpose. So I call the the forerunner to forerunner and the back, and then it's a, an eleven k column right away on grade one turn. So that works out for me, and it's a six k. So if you want to deny damage, then you can do that route essentially. Uh, for more regalia units, I have the Stride Fodder Flap Angel. Um, so do keep in mind, if you call it a rear guard, you have to reveal a regalia grade 3. So it has to be the Angelica in this case. It can be the Uranus. Um, and then you just get another Angelica. And then in this case, like why would you even do that? Is that you can discard cards that you would rather soul charge from the drop. So you can, some of your grade 2s like Geno and uh, I think it's Hesperus. You can discard it early on and then soul charge it right, like the next turn and then just, or even the same turn and then just use it. So that way you can get those full effects and at the same time, or you could just use this as stride fodder. And it just counts plus two for any stride. So it's not restricted to regalia strides. It, you can stride into a Maruda with it, for example. And so for the last regalia in the grade one lineup, I had enough room to put one Expo Angel. Uh, this card's really good. And I know people have played anywhere from like three to four copies before. Now, one thing that I realized is because I'm not playing full regalia, obviously there's a lot of non-regalia units, you have to be aware of that. And from playtesting, I actually noticed that um, I want to keep those regalia units in the drop because I only have so many. Because you reuse those as you soul blast them and soul charge them back. It's, it's like a cycle, essentially. <laughs> and so doing uh, getting this off is less often. And so that's why I put it down to one so I can see it more in the late game, probably the finishing turn or maybe as early as the first try game, um, not first try game, the first try turn and maybe getting that draw and stuff like that. But it, it sometimes can hurt. So just be wary of that because you return three uh, regalias with different names back to the deck. And honestly, sometimes you want to save those for the G guards so you can still charge them back and be good for the next turn too. So <laughs> it's just kind of like this pros and cons, but it still helps with not decking out as fast, too. So in that regard. And plus, if you have a Regalia in the card name, it actually gets plus three. And then if you have something face up with Regalia in the same in the G zone, then you draw a card. So it actually replaces itself. It's a 10k booster. So it's really good for the rear guard columns. And again, it's a Regalia. So it can restand through Minerva's turn as well. So that's actually important. It's a Regalia booster that you want to call. Otherwise, you have to call it the Stride Fighter. And you really don't want to call the PGS a booster. <laughs> so really, these are your boosters in the sense. So just keep that in mind. Otherwise, you have to use these as boosters. So now onto the non-regala units, Austria and, of course, the Mihi Karihime. Wow, that's a long name. <laughs> anyway, with Austria, this card is surprisingly really good in um, regalia. <laughs> it's very subtle, but... So the first skill is Vanguard or Rearguard Circle. When it's placed, draw a card and then bottom deck a card from your hand. So it's good for filtering. And then if it's on the Vanguard Circle, you can just Soul Charge two cards. So you get Soul Charge from that, just writing it. But the filtering actually is really good. So you can start forming a stack at the bottom of the deck because eventually you'll actually get to almost deck out. And if you use cards like this too, or even uh, the, the Flip G Guard that return cards, you well, that one shuffles, but this actually stacks and then this can stack. So you can actually um, <clears throat> start forming a stack. And if it comes to that point, it might be relevant. But honestly, the filtering is very helpful because you can fix your hand so you can actually do your plays. You know, if you need to soul charge or have beaters, uh, all that kind of stuff. It's really useful. It's, it's, it's crazy. And at the same time, the second skill is at the end of the battle, it boosts it. You can soul blast too and then bounce it back to hand. So this is very key also in the early game. Because you can be very aggressive in the early game, making bigger columns, and then you could just bounce it back. And because you're soul blasting too, it helps with actually keeping that um, four cards or less. So that way, our Maruda actually can just go off. You know, remember, uh, four cards or less, draw two. Wow, that's bad. Remember, four cards <laughs> or less to draw two cards and soul charge five. So that's very key. And so you can do that early on to set up so you don't have to rely on Uranus. For that example and then again since it bounces back you can reuse the skill next turn and if you have copies you can just really filter filtering and it's honestly a really great card and you, you still maintain hand advantage at that point because if you're going against any retire clans or something like that that if it stays on the field um it'll it'll die right and then it's a 10k guard too so it'll be useful in that and then when you don't really need it you just drop it <laughs> so it's really good and then the um so this card when it's placed from hand and the next time you Soul Blast, you can reduce it by three. And honestly, I use it on the Minerva turns most of the time. So 
I do it after when I'm when I'm doing the Soul Blast six turn or the in the battle phase. I want to make sure that before I go into the battle phase, I call this and then use the skill. So you can do a restanding Minerva turn with Soul Blast and three Regalia units. So honestly, that makes it a lot easier, and especially if you have so much cards in the Soul. Sometimes you want to get another Force Marker, and so Uranus Soul Blast two, and now it's like, do I do I have enough Soul? to do the Soul Blast 6, and then if you want to do the quad check, it's another Soul Blast 3. So if you don't have anything that really kind of like reduces that, the Soul Blast 3 plus Soul Blast 6 is like 9 cards. <laughs> so that's kind of crazy. So this helps a lot tremendously. Um, even in, in the first stride with uh, the Muspel, you can Soul Blast any number of cards, and then for that many cards you Soul Blast it, choose that many units, and it gets like plus 4. For, um, those units get plus 4 for the turn. Uh, I'll just show it right now. Let's see. There you go. <clears throat> this card. So you could choose each rear guard that you so basically um, card you soul blasted, they get plus four. And if it's three or more, you can draw a card or, or counter charge, right? And so this turn you can take advantage as well, where basically you can keep your soul. And then you get the benefit of actually getting power up and draw a card or counter charge if you need to. Just depends on your situation. So very good card. Um sometimes with Austria, I've drawn into this card and <laughs> during a Minerva turn. Um, and it, it just makes that Minerva turn really strong. So, uh, so far, this ratio has been working for me, and I don't want to make any changes so far. But yeah, until the grade two. So, for the Regalia units, I play for Freya. Uh, Freya, when it's placed on Rearguard Circle, if you have a grade three or greater Vanguard with Regalia in the name, so this is non GB, you can Chiron Blast one, draw a card, and then you can Soul Charge two Regalias from your drop. And it's really good because you get advantage and also you're soul charging, so you're replenish, replenishing that soul, so that way you could actually use it that turn or just for the next turn, and that's essentially. So I play four. It's still a very good card, and then it has a GB two skill, which you can proc on first stride because they flip. Um, well, the G, the 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 strides that you use flip, so you can just have it right away. When your Vanguard with Galia and the card name attacks, you, this unit gets plus three. So. If it's a non restanding turn, it just becomes a 12k attacker by itself. So it hits Protect and Excel clans by itself. Uh, if it's the Minerva turn, it just gets another plus three. So it becomes a 15k attacker. And so with certain numbers, it actually helps out. So 15 plus, uh, like, let's say, uh, an AK booster, that's 23. And so that starts hitting Force, K, uh, force Vanguards, basically, in that sense. And so if you have a 7k booster, then you hit uh, Protect and Excel if they got a 10k trigger, for example. And you really can stack it up. It might it's it sometimes comes out where it breaks the threshold, so that's good. So it's just kind of like a plus. But for primarily the first skill is what we need. <laughs> so for the next regalia units, Janelle. Uh Janelle is really good. Um however I reduced it to three. So here's the thing. So this card, it's GB1 skill at the bottom. When it's actually soul blasted, you can actually choose one of your regalia units in the card name and actually give it plus three. And so you can beef up your Vanguard or you can beef up your regards, but since it's 3k, uh, more than likely you want to beef up the rear guards, and sometimes you can break a threshold. It just depends because um, you might use it once to break a threshold, and you might have to soul blast two or three of them to break a threshold. But the plus 3k isn't as um, easy to break thresholds uh, multiple times than, you know, a force marker or the crit trigger that goes into soul to give it plus 10k to the vanguard and that kind of thing. So just keep that in mind. So that's why I was like, maybe I can make room from other cards for, you know, soul blasting purposes. So otherwise, it's a good card to be soul blasting. So you can get additional benefit from soul blasting. So you want to have that synergy, basically. And then the first skill is actually pretty neat. And it can be used sometimes. So basically, when it attacks Vanguard, you may have it get plus 2k for the battle. And if you do, at the end of the battle, this goes into your soul. So it swoops itself... It's good if you want to swoop it in against like a Retire Clan or a Link Joker or something like that. And sometimes you want to just keep it on board just as an intercept. So it's really up to you. Uh, it, it really depends on the matchup too. So <laughs> there's that option too. Sometimes that 11k mark with some um, some booster or a power up of plus 3k can actually break a threshold. So that's something worth actually considering. And at the same time, on the Minerva time, maybe it'd be the final push. Just make sure you do it... Um, after the restand, because if you try to do the skill before it even restands, it's going to go into soul, and now it's just gone. <laughs> Bad day at that point. Uh, with the other benefit of a regalia with being soul blasted is Hesperus. Hesperus is a promo back in the day where if it was soul blasted, you could, your vanguard actually gets a red tech skill where when this unit attacks and hits a vanguard, you could choose one of your opponent's regards and actually retire it. 
And what's neat about this, it actually stacks. So if you have two of them or you soul charge it back and soul bless it again, you could essentially retire two units on one hit. And if you have a restanding Vanguard like Minerva, you can actually proc that every time you hit because you're restanding. So you're more than likely to hit. Sometimes your opponent may take the first Vanguard hit. And so at that point, you can retire one or two units. And it just depends how much you abuse it. <laughs> so it's really good. So if I Soul Blast these combination of units, I'm like powering up my field and at the same time I have Retire Power. And sometimes you want to retire some units that may be a problem. Like for example, I was playing against my friend Ross and he was playing Mega Colony. So he had the, the grade one, I think it's called Brownie Jerk. And then the other grade one, the Centipede, the promo that are actually pretty annoying. So if they're still on the field and I have this girl, I'm going to try to kill those units, for example, right? Anyway, Prometheus is the non-regality grade two in this lineup, and honestly, it's a really good card because the first skill is Vanguard or Regard Circle. When placed, look at the top two cards at the top of your deck, put one into your soul, and then put one on the top of the deck. So it's like Fenrir grade four, GB2, GB3 skill. I'm changing Revelation into this form of Revelation. This is like, <laughs> this is what basically Revelation should have been to begin with. And one of the neat things you can do, especially in the early game, you can really be aggressive and stack a crit trigger or any kind of trigger. Um, in non-regalia builds, like in Wiseman, Fenrir that I play, I sometimes actually just ride this. If I, I want to damage the Nai, I can stack maybe a draw trigger or a heal trigger. So you can just stack that and then just pass turn. And if they hit you, you automatically get a power up on the you know damage check. And if you're playing against something like Ezel where they level up and they have these fields and where a damage uh, jack trigger can actually save your life, that those are the key the key turns you can do. <laughs> but back to Regalia, you can use this to really take advantage of your Vanguard turns in the strike turns. So for example, you can potentially actually see a crit and stack it and that can determine your attack burden um, be more effective at that point. Uh, same thing if you're doing an Amaruda turn where your rearguard is already um, plus critical. And so if your opponent's, let's say, at two damage, if you attack with Amaruda and they take it, you can put the crit on the Vanguard, put them in the four, and then they have to guard the, the rear guard column that has the crit. And so that's one thing that you can force them to drop cards or just kill them at that point. Or if they perfect guarded and they're like at three damage, then you can put the, the crit trigger onto the rear guard column that has the plus crit and becomes critical three. So again, they had to guard that. If they perfect guarded the Vanguard, now they got to guard the other column. <laughs> so otherwise they go from three to six at that point. So this card helps with that. So it's one of those things that I just kind of like plop at the end of the, before I start my battle phase and it's like, all right, let me see my drive track, see if I can actually stack it. Sometimes soul charging may actually give you the unit you need to soul blast. So that's helpful. And the second, kill, uh, second skill almost comes up. Um, but it's basically when it attacks your opponent and, in, and your, if your opponent's vanguard is greater or greater, this unit and your vanguard get plus five until the turn. So you could actually kind of just like attack with this, give Minerva the power up and restand and it's plus five basically for those two battles. So it's really useful in that sense, but honestly, you want to break thresholds that are plus 10k rather than plus 5k. They seem more beneficial unless you are very at a critical point <laughs> and maybe they're at five damage. And that 5k can matter for, for real. Um, and you can take advantage in first strike too where since he's a 10k and you've plop him down for like, let's say um, by himself on a Maruta turn. If you attack, he he's a 15k by, by himself. So you can actually poke Vanguard with Amaruda and then the, the unit that got the plus crit in the 10k, it, it's just like has all the triggers stacked onto it. So it's pressure in that sense as well. Now I'm just going to show you how the ride progression looks like because that soul count actually matters for the Amaruda turn. So let's say I'm on the grade 1 turn and this is how it looks like when I restand for my turn going into grade 2. Let's say I'm going to use uh, ride on this guy. So he's going to soul charge a unit for me. So let's say I'm soul charging this for example. And then you can counter blast and then use the forerunner skill at that point. And then let's say you soul charge this regalia unit. Um, you can draw a card and then by the time you get to your grade 3 turn you ride Angelica. And again, you soul charge another normal unit with regalia in the name into uh, from the drop into the soul. And so at this point, you actually have six in the soul. Okay, so basically when you stride into Amaruda, you won't be able to use the second skill, so that doesn't matter. Uh, you have to be aware of Revelation because you do have access to Revelation. So if you already have six cards, unless you were able to filter out with like an Austria early on, or you have a Uranus that's going to like do a dismain phase turn, um, just be wary of that because if you only have one, 
you can only work with six or less. So that way, when you plop down this, you can soul blast two. Just, just for example, I'm soul blasting two. Now, not only I get a force marker, but now I'm back to four essentially. Um, so with that, I'll get the force marker, and then I could use Amaruda skill to get this plus ten k in a crit, and I'm good to go because I'll draw two cards, and then soul charge like five, <laughs> which is really powerful. And I just kind of wanted to point that out because I'm not sure if that was clear when I was explaining it. Um, so yeah, it's one of the powerful combos that you can do first strike with the Amaruda. Otherwise, you have to do, fall back into Muspel, for example. Onto the stride. So I'm playing uh, Muspel over here. Like I said earlier, it flips any card in the G zone. You can uh, soul blast any number of cards and then choose a regard for each of them soul blasted. And those regards get plus four. And if you soul blasted three or more, you can draw a card or counter charge. So depending on what your situation is, most of the time you want to draw. But if you need a counter charge, you can counter charge at that point. And so you can play around with cards like Freya and all that kind of stuff to make like a very big solid field that um, potentially can kill them, you know, if they are high damage for whatever reason in that point, you can really do a push at that point. And you can also take advantage of like Uranus and all that kind of stuff to give it a force marker and that kind of thing. So my spell's still useful in that point. Whoops, sorry. And of course, Minerva, like I said, so bless three regalia, gets plus 10k in a, in a drive, um, Persona Flip. And then GB3, uh, Soul Blast 6, and then discard a card when it attacks at the end of the battle. Uh, when it attacks, pay the cost, and then at the end of the battle, resend all Regalia units. So it's a very powerhouse turn, and honestly, if you really want to, you don't have to do the first skill. Uh, it just will be triple drive, and then it will basically be no drive at that point. Yeah, because minus 3. Yeah, so <laughs> you want to do the quad check, and then it will become one check. So you see five drive checks, which is really good. And because you're playing 12 crit, it's really threatful. <laughs> so it's really good at that point. And then, of course, I'm like I explained a couple of times. It's a really solid card. And ideally, you want to put this on first strike. So it puts you in a really good position to be aggressive, build advantage, and live for the next turn so you can finish them off with Minerva. Um, honestly, if you can, you can go first. They first stride you and you G-guard. You can go into Minerva that first stride, basically. And you Persona Flip with its skill, and you're automatically GB3, and you can do the restand turn right away. So that's one of the key things that you can do. Otherwise, you can fall back to Amaruda or Muspo, or even Earth. Earth is really good, too. Basically, on plays, kind of blast one, flip a copy of itself, and then you basically Soul Charge all the Regalia units in your drop into Soul, and then it gets the Red Tech skill if you actually have, in the G zone, two or more Regalia. So... Um, if you G-guard it with a Regalia in the name, or if you already stride into a Regalia unit... This is live with the red tech skill. And the red tech skill is really just Soul Blast 6. Any, you know, it doesn't matter if it's Regalia. It gets plus uh, 10k in a crit. And so it's actually not once per turn, so you can use it multiple times. And honestly, if your opponent's in a position where they can't guard a big Vanguard attack, and you just kind of want to one-shot them, you can actually do that with Earth. Do that like two, two or three times, especially if you have a Force Marker coming in or something. Um... But it just depends how much soul that you have at that point. <laughs> so it can be really nutty. Uh, so it's still there in just in case. And then Ultima, of course. Ultima is really good now with the V0 Strix. So you can pump up your field with all the, the criticals that you want. You can kill an opponent from 3 damage, <laughs> too. And some of the units that you want are Uranus, uh, Uranus and um, Freya as the, the rear guards. And then you can give it boosters. And then your drive track will be bonkers at that point and so you can really um take advantage of that just depends on your situation and go from there lastly the g guards um playing five g guards so the first one is ear this one's really good because when it's placed on the guardian circle you can choose up to four cards from your drop zone with different names or not different names different grades and put them into your soul so if you put two or more it gets plus five and then if you put four or more it gets an additional 10k so it's a big shield if you basically so trips four different grades into it Ideally, you want Regalia units, so if that pans out, you can do it that way. Um, it's a little harder now, since you're playing less Regalia units, but you can still Soul Charge the generic um, units, because the other unit that we have is Iris. Now, Iris is flexible, because you can Soul Charge any three from the drop, and then it gets plus five for shield. And so you can do multiple of the same grade. So, for example, um, a Hesperus and a, what do you call it, um, Janelle, so those two cards can actually be, you know, important to Soul Charge, so you can go off that next turn, basically. Uh, but other than that, um, both of them are good shield, uh, especially her. Her, not so much. This is more like, uh, let's see what I can put into my solo so I'm good for next turn kind of thing. And then Laura is the one that flips uh, a G-guard, so, you know, you can get to GB whatever higher, faster than that, but 
Uh, we don't play the GBA, <laughs> so that's kind of irrelevant. But anyway, you can choose two or more cards with normal units with the same grade and actually put them back into your deck. And then, of course, shuffle your deck as well, and it gets plus five for each card return. So you can return up to, like, three cards, get plus 15k shield, and you basically return three cards to your deck. So you're not decking out. So it helps um, on top of the Expel Angel that you play. This helps with kind of, like, staying alive in that in that process. <laughs> so it may come up. So I still have it in that sense, and really, yeah. So that's the Regalia deck profile, guys. I hope you enjoyed the deck profile. Honestly, it's it's very surprisingly how some of the V series cards actually synergize pretty well with the deck. Um, once in a while, there are a little hiccups because of you know the Regalia restrictions, but it's it's not as bad as I thought it was. And I felt honestly, you just need to play with it more just to get the feel, and so you you basically set yourself in a position of winning at that point. Um, but other than that, it's a very fun deck. It, it's very powerful. Restanding Vanguards, 12 crit, uh, built advantage, can build massive columns, and it has access to cards like Amaruda, to Ultima, and then of course itself with the Restanding Stripe in the form of Minerva. So honestly, it, it's a fun deck. I enjoy it. <laughs> so I hope this was um, insightful for those uh, Regalia players. Um, definitely, if we get more support, I'll definitely look forward to those cards and see how they turn out. So. With that, guys, uh, leave a like, comment down below, share with your friends, and subscribe. See ya, amigos. Bye.